Hey guys, Tomer here, and welcome back to another video of Gaming News. This time around, I will be talking about Civilization VI, which was announced two or three days ago. Its release is set on the 21st of October of 2016. So first, I will be reading the uh, all the changes we know of at this point. Uh, credit goes to TP Angolan. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, for creating and updating the mega thread containing all the information, a link will be in the description. After I'm done reading these, I will read some of the articles we gathered this information from. And maybe in a few days I might react to the announcement trailer, which I, have, I haven't watched yet. So, let me find it. Here's the mega thread, okay. Um... Cities districts. Instead of taking up a single tile, cities can now expand across multiple tiles. Everything is now placed on the map, blowing the cities apart. Uh, all of the upgrades that you build are now spread across the landscape in the area of control of its city. Its city is now comprised of districts. There are a total of 12 district types, it's with a different draw and different bonuses with the terrain, limited by population. Districts aren't built for free. You first have to build by a district and then you can start placing buildings on it. Number of districts a city can support is limited by its population. Cities can still can still control up to 36 hexes. Holy shit. But the number of improvements that they'll need to work the land has been reduced, with districts moving in to fill the gaps. Cities upgrade paths now revolve around a matter of geographic practicality. The happiness level will be focused on a city level rather than on a global base across your civilization. Which, by the way, was a feature from Civilization 4. Harbors can be built on water tiles. Additionally, if you do, you can't build anything else in that tile, like a wonder, so no pyramids in the water. City, city tile limits are the same. Districts can be containers for additional buildings, holy sites that will eventually house religious buildings, such as churches or temples. Buildings. Harbor, holy site, bonus if built near mountain or woods. Industrial zone, military encampment, where your military uh, buildings go, barracks, stables, cannot, they cannot be built next to your city center. Research campus, bonus if uh, built near jungle, rainforest and mountains. Wonders, wonders now also exist on the map, each taking up their own tile. Wonders have Terrain requirements. Wonders, uh, wonder movies are back, which was a feature from Civilization 4, but now they're in game and some fe and some feature a day night transition. That's cool. When watching another player's AI city, you will see the wonder getting constructed. Holy shit! Really? I haven't read this. I didn't read this before. I just found this mega thread and I thought, hey, this is gonna help with my video. Really? Now that is amazing! Stonehenge must be built near stone, the Colossus must be built near co coast, the Great uh, Lighthouse must be built near coast, the Pyramids must be built on desert. So there are requirements for each wonder. Now that's that's interesting. Science. Every technology has its own uh, realism-based mini-quest, which speeds up res uh, research when con completed. Providing substantial boost to its progress, even if the player hasn't reached it, uh, hasn't reached it on the tech tree yet. For instance, founding a coastal city or building ships will accelerate related nautical technologies. For example, the masonry boost requires stone blocks and quarries. You can research that tech by hand without ha without access to stone. But if you can find a quarry site and get one up and going, you unlock the tech boost, and that gives you half of the research points needed for masonry. Tech boosts called Eureka moments. Now that's cool. Approximately 50 technologies, which is less than uh, Civilization 5. Combat and Diplomacy. Diplomacy will be overhauled, but fire, uh, fire axes aren't ready to talk about the specifics of that just yet. Diplomacy be begins very informally with the sending of gifts, basic uh, trading, declarations of war. 
Eventually it becomes formalized and more complex as embassies and their ambassadors spread across the world. There will be more than one way to declare war. Support units can now be embedded with other units like anti-tank support with infantry or a warrior with settlers. Uh, these are units that are more sensibly depicted as special e equipment embedded with a larger unit rather than standalone figures on the map. Which, uh, so there will be a change in the models as well because they're gonna look cool, I guess. Similar units can also be combined to form powerful core units. Core are available mid-game. I heard, uh, I, I read somewhere that it's uh, the Napoleonic era, which apparently will be an era in the game. I don't know, that's what I read, it, I could be wrong. It's the reason I didn't add this in the video, but just it's an interesting little thing. Three units can be combined together to make an army. In other words, from mid-game and onwards, uh, you can create core. Core are two units combined together. Three units combined together make an army, which means that you can only have armies from mid-game to late-game. Which I, I don't think is fair. You, you know, back in the day, back in the ancient times, they had a lot of armies. Units can now be organized into formation, which means they'll all they always move together rather than having to be shuffled across the map one at a time. Holy shit! Now that is good. That, that is very good. I, I like I like that they did that because micromanaging everything is kind of shit, you know. Formations can be applied to uh, large collections of military units or civilian units and their escorts. Bombers can destroy improvements districts. Now that is good. You could only destroy cities. And now you can destroy uh, specific districts, which adds an element of role play into it. For example, if I feel like playing like as a leader, you know, I, if I feel like playing like a, as a leader who's like a bookworm and really loves books and shit, now I can choose my bombers to attack, for example, say the military base district. Yeah, attack the military bases in that district, in the military district, instead of you know attacking the the campus district where you have all the libraries and all the um, you know universities and shit because you know I love education and I'm not gonna rob a civilization of that even if we are at war. Uh, diplomacy made to focus less on warfare as time goes on. On map characters have more exaggerated proportions than those in Civilization 5. Yeah they're larger I have a bit of a complaint with that but I'll get into that later when I give you my opinion on this. For the most part, I'm just reading this out now. Combat experience goes into military techs instead of promotions for units. Oh, that's a, a cool system. Are promotions still there, though? I want to I give my units promotions. Promotions are a good system. I mean, fucking hell, blitz. Blitz, man, just blitz. Just the best. AI. AI is said to have been improved. Every AI leader in the game now has a set of agendas, personality quirks that inform how they approach the game. Excuse me. AI characters will change over the course of a game based largely on how you interact with them. Now that is an interesting feature. You, uh, you know, they said this in an interview, but you have to think on your feet. They want to make you think on your feet. Other mechanics: religion, archaeology, trade routes, and espionage are confirmed to be in the base game. In the base game, in other words, everything in Gods and Kings and uh, Brave New World will be included in the base game for Civilization VI, which I'm really grateful for because I'm not gonna be buying a lot of expansions, because frankly, you know, I, I don't have the money to do that shit. Uh, great works are, ava are back with gorgeous new presentation and interactivity. Oh, interactivity, I like that. I like that. Tourism and cultural victory type dynamics are back. One victory type removed, one added, and steps to get to the other, and steps to get to others changed. One of the eras is called the Napoleonic Era. See, I told you. I told you one of the eras was called the Napoleonic Era. Uh, City-states are returning. Roads will be auto-created by the way that merchants travel. Now, that is interesting. That is rather interesting. Now, I don't have to plop down roads and have to pay maintenance for them. That's good. Although, usually, paying maintenance is worth it, frankly. Because when you connect the city, you're going to be getting double the money you have lost. So, you're earning money. Art style. Base non-unique units have a cultural flair to them. Colors, helmets, ethnicity. Ah, oh, now that's interesting. So we're going to have Asians in Asian armies and Africans in African armies instead of what we have now, which is, you know, 
the same white dudes on every army. I mean, I, I don't really give a shit about that because, you know, why would I? There are l tiny little units on the screen and most of the time their uh, skin color is obscured, so who gives a crap? But there were people who complained about it, so whatever, you know, whatever. Art style and UI based around the Age of Exploration. I don't know what that means. Uh, I guess... I guess that means, like, wooden patterns and, like, ship-like patterns? Or am I... Oh, Age of Exploration, isn't that, isn't that like an, exp an expansion or something, or a DLC for some or something? I, I could check that out, I could see. Maybe I'll put a photo here, if I can find it, if it, if it is... I think it was an expansion or something. Maybe I can find a photo of the UI uh, and the art style to maybe give you... A, to demonstrate to you what uh, it is. Uh, I'll search about that later. Can zoom down to the level where you can see birds flying around the building. Holy shit. Every building in the game is modeled. Nice. Fog of War looks like a map. Areas you explore look like a hand-drawn map in areas you've already... Ex look like a hand-drawn map in areas you've already explored. Hmm. Players will be aided with a color code system so they can draw pins on certain tiles in order to remind themselves that this might be a great place for factory sometime in the future. Oh, no, that's interesting. Wasn't I think it was in previous uh, Civilization titles, this. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you, now I can finally put pins on the places where I fought, like, the glorious battle of Arcanium in uh, 300 uh, BC, where my fucking warriors... Where my three Greek warriors crushed a single Roman settler. <laughs> I remember that day like it was yesterday. <laughs> Wonder movies are back, but now they're in game. New possible customize new possibly customizable sun rotation features. So I can I can actually play the game at night. Holy shit. It can actually be night in game. Now the engine. Civilization 6 will be running on a brand new engine. Civilization 6 will be far more moddable because of said engine. Now that is interesting. And it's stated to be more moddable than Civilization 5, although that's not that hard. Y yeah. See, th this is true. Civilization 5 isn't that hard to mod. So if they're saying it's far more moddable, I mean, imagine how easy it's going to be. It's going to be fucking child's play. I mean, Civilization, fi uh, Civilization 5, I've had my issues modding it. I've had my issues making mod for uh, mods for it, but nothing like really too difficult like really I, I can make mods rather easily I, I know the ropes I can do it you know you just need some practice and you, you need some practice some trial and error reading a few tutorials online and you know just that and some experience really that's all you need there is nothing nothing else it's really easy so imagine how much easier this is gonna be it's gonna be a fucking cakewalk New multiplayer modes intended to be completed to be completed with within a single session of a few hours. Yeah, you can set a goal. I heard you can set like a multiplayer goal for the campaign. For example, you could have a game from like the uh, Middle Ages to the Renaissance, and you could make it so that game can last for like um, you know, you can make it so that game can last from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance, and then the victory condition will be the guy with the biggest religion like the most well spread religion you know the the really the most widespread i guess religion yeah you can have these little conditions that they'll be adding so th that's pretty cool from there a specific victory condition is added for instance the player with the strongest religion re wins yeah that exactly this exactly what i just said there are going to be four individual the, there are going to be four individual per tile instead of civilization 5 12 halved for civilians Ah, uh, four individuals per tile. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's see. Teddy Roosevelt and Gaddy might be confirmed as leaders in the game. And let's go to the articles. Yeah, let's move on to the articles. So, uh, our first article is from PC Gamer, Civilization 6, everything you need to know. Um, okay. I'm going to make this rather short so I can state my opinion as well. Fire axes on city districts, active research, and Gaddy's dark side. A lot of this development team is the same development team that pushed Civilization 5 through to the Brave New World expansion, says Ed Beach, lead designer of Civilization 6. We're very proud of the work we did there. At the same time, that familiarity meant Breach and his team were aware as a, a 
we're aware of how players approach Civilization 5. We notice that there are certain key approaches that people all share in common. We're sort of in a rut, where all the players are playing Civilization 5 the same way. Everyone says go for four cities, but probably not too much more than that. There are certain policy trees that are well worth it, other policy trees that they don't find that they are using. In Civilization 6, Fire Axis wants a game that doesn't settle much to an established meta. Excuse me. We want players to have to think on their feet more, says Beach. We want a situation where you have to react to what the game is presenting to you, what the map is giving you, your starting position, what it means to have certain leaders next to you. It's all designed to provide a more varied improv improvisational campaign. Cities are made up of districts, in Civilization 6 its building type is a type of district, and each district exists as a separate tile. You have a campus style, that's where all your research is going on. You have your library, university, research lab, all, on the, all that in the campus style. Similarly, there will be military tiles, industrial tiles, and harbors. There are 10 to 12 different types of tiles that you put around your city, says Beach. And the player now has this intricate layout puzzle where they, dis where they decide with districts go around their city, that becomes a, f a cool, fun way to develop your empire. It has a layer of depth that we didn't have before. District placement is more than just an authentic choice. Some map, some map tiles convey bonuses to specific districts. Mountains are great for studying the skies. So offer, uh, so offer bonuses to your uh, science campus. To your science campus, mountains are also an imposing sp spot for worship, providing a boost to your faith. Every district has a good place to put it. You're, tr you're trying to manage where those go with where all the all the resource tiles are. It becomes a fun layout puzzle of trying to maximize your bonuses. District tiles also convey information by looking at a city's districts. You can easily tell what that city does. At a glance, you'll be able to see which of your cities is dedicated to which resource. The same holds true for rival civilizations. From the main map screen, you'll be able to easily identify the city that, if captured or destroyed, could crimple an enemy's production. Research is more active. Unlike in previous civilizations, research speech isn't based uh, purely on your civilization's science output. Now, there are things for pretty much every technology in the game that you can do out in the game world to push you in that direction, says Beach. So, if you want to push masonry or construction because you want to build walls, you better go out and establish a quarry that's going to teach your citizens the skills they need to be good at masonry. Your empire learns by doing. If you want to develop a navy, in previous games of civilization, you could research all the technology for that without even having to settle a city along the coast. Here, actually, you get a significant bonus towards sailing when you put a city on the coast. You can get further bonuses for other naval technologies by creating fishing boats and starting to harvest natural uh, naval resources. Some research boosts will be available based on the terrain around you, feeding into Firex's aim of incentivizing specific strategies based on your starting location. Players are going to have to think uh, through... <laughs> Look at this start position. This this is a great one for me to push on horseback riding and develop a very mobile infantry. I'm going to push this direction, go through that part of the tree this time. What's going on? Oh, Jesus. Okay, something happened. Sorry. Uh, AI leaders have an agenda. Firexes wants diplomacy to feel more dynamic and to force players to work out the political landscape on the fly. Its AI leader has a historical agenda that's appropriate to their historical personality, says Beach. We've chosen for each of the uh, for each of them to have a play style that's unique but appropriate for their role in leading their country in history. One leader might be fanatical about allying with city states that force you into a decision, back off from city states and potentially be friends, or compete over city states' affection and maybe come to uh, maybe come to blows. You have to adjust to the different personalities that you meet and find out what makes them happy and what's going to anger them. That's going to vary from one leader to the next and give its civilization a very different feel. Of course, the historical traits can be learned by the player and applied to future playthroughs. To combat that, Fire Axis takes traits that are historically tied to leaders and secretly assigns them at the beginning of each game. As you go through the game, you can discover what they are by what they are by spying on them or trying to l learn more secrets about them once you've learned that about other leaders you can fully unlock the diplomatic landscape i ask what is to my mind the most important question of all if a leader's traits are historical will gaddy be less fond of nuclear armageddon we have a special way of handling him initially he's going to seem very peaceful but you have a dark side says beach 
Support units can be embedded into other units. Civilization 6 isn't removing Civilization 5's one unit per tile rule, but Fire Axis is dialing back on some of the harsher restrictions. One of the things we wanted to do was make sure you could tie units together. In Civilization 5, it was tough to escort your settlers across the map because you couldn't tie them to a military unit, says Beach. Additionally, Beach notes, armies were perhaps a little too spread out. We need to concentrate your force to take our city. Everything being on its own tile was a problem at that point. Beach describes support units as something that was part of your military force before that really shouldn't have had to take up a towel. As the name suggests, it's supporting equipment. Battering rams, siege towers, anti-tank guns, and anti-air guns. All the stuff that's like special equipment for your units, in Civilization V you had to have a separate towel, but we've gone away from that. Multiplayer won't take all day. That's been the bane of Civilization multiplayer existence for quite a while. The sessions can be so long says Beach. To combat this, Firex has implemented not just a quicker multiplayer game speed, but also specific scenarios and unique victory sets designed for a shortened game. You can have a meaningful session with a very clear goal and we're trying to set it up so it's a one or two hour session. For example, a campaign that starts at the beginning of the Middle Ages and runs until the end of the Renaissance, from there a specific uh, victory condition is added. For instance, the player with the strongest religion wins. We have a system where we can roll conditions like that and each of these can be a multiplayer scenario that we can present to players. We can quickly develop a whole bunch of these and offer them. Such scenarios won't be uh, exclusive to multiplayer either. They'll also be in available in solo campaigns. That sounds very good. Uh, to give you my opinion on this, honestly, uh, I honestly think that... Um, I like the fact that everything that's in Brave New World and uh, Gods and Kings, I like that it's going to be in the base game of Civilization VI, because I'm really satisfied with the, with the stuff they added. I'm, I'm really, really satisfied. I thought it was bad enough that, you know, in Civilization IV you had all these things, like espionage, in, you know, basically in the game, and then you had to buy DLC and expansions. You had to buy expansions to get those things in Civilization V. I mean, that doesn't seem fair in, any, in the slightest. What I would like to see, I want to see revolutions, and I want to see colonization coming back. A revolution is effectively, I, I want to see if a city gets too uh, fed up with your rule, because as they said, as, a, as it was pointed out, happiness will be, um, it will be city, it will be city based. It won't be empire based like it is in Civilization V where the whole empire is happy or the whole empire is sad. It will be based on your cities, like it was in previous games. Yeah, I think that if a city is too unhappy with your rule, they could just kind of break away and form their own nation. And the game could choose from a pool of nations that aren't in the game, and put one such nation in the game. And I think the same... I think based on the culture of your nation, for example, if you have England, based on that, say, um, say if a nation... Uh, is if a uh, city breaks away from you, then that city will be the United States of America. They, they'll form the United States of America. Or if if not, then the system, or if, you know, they don't want that system, because I'm going to explain why. Effectively, that system could be similar to colonization, where if, if your colonies get too unhappy, they can form one nation that was effectively a colony of another nation, historically. For example, if your colonies want to break away from you, they'll form the United States of America. If you're Spain, and your colonies break away from you, they could form the Aztecs, or the Incas, you know, the people that had that land before the Spanish came by. Or, for example, if the US and Britain are both in the game, then if Britain has colonies, then the rebellion in the colonies could lead to the new nation being formed being the Shoshone or the Sioux or or any of these any of these other tribes that you know were in North America before the colonies appeared you know you could do this with civilizations that didn't colonize that much either for example Byzantine colonies could break away and form Greece you know if I mean we're assuming here that both Byzantium and Greece will be included in the game which I doubt you know, I'm pretty sure Greece will be in it. I'm pretty fucking sure. That there were talks about Alexander the Great being in the trailer or something. I don't know. That like Alexander the Great, the Great was somewhere. It was mentioned somewhere, and people were mentioning him. People were talking about him. So people were talking to, about him as if he had been announced. And if you have Alexander the Great in your game, then obviously you have Greece in your game. 
But yeah, um, I like the new thing with districts. I, I kind of pointed this out before when I was reading about it. But I, I like this role-playing aspect of it. You know, I can send my bombers to bomb uh, the military encampment district while keeping the campus district unharmed. Because, you know, I'm, I'm this bookworm le type of leader that just loves, you know, knowledge and shit and doesn't want to rob anyone of knowledge. Um, I don't particularly like the graphics. They, they look like something that came out of a fucking free social empires fucking social free empires for the android os fucking fucking android you know on on the fucking google app store and you know just these fucking free like games that often have microtransactions and you know you need to send you, to get more coins you need to send it to your fucking friends and shit okay something just happened whatever who gives a shit yeah, you need to like send it to your friends. Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks like those games. It doesn't look particularly like they could have gone with the graphics of Civilization Four. I would have been I would have been fine with that. You know, I guess it's in it's a sim in a similar aspect, but it's it's even like it's too happy even for Civilization standards. You know, if you look at the graphics of Civilization Four, they weren't that happy and cheery and colorful. Civilization Five was gloom and dark, but then again, Civilization Five was the old one out. Uh, but seriously, not even Civilization 4 was this fucking happy and cheery. And they're going with a really cartoonish type of thing. Now, I'm not too bothered about the graphics, because I'm sure somebody's gonna make a mod that will change them. It will be one of the first mods to be released. I'm fucking certain about that. And said that the game will be very, very moddable, so... I'm pretty sure somebody could fix that. And I've seen some uh, people on the subreddit, on the Civilization subreddit. Yeah, I've seen all of these people. Uh, effectively talk about how they, they, they've, they've done, they've shown you fucking pictures where they've changed the colors and they've added some filters and shit and they've shown like the pictures that were provided to us but they've made them like moodier, like darker, more Civilization 5-ish and they, they look much better in my opinion but if they can do it on a fucking picture I'm pretty sure somebody will be found that can do it in reality, you know? I also don't like that the units seem to be like three or four or five giant units instead of like ten tiny units. Uh, but I guess that's why the core and the armies are there for. So you can merge them and they can look like Civilization V units. But I'm, I'm just assuming this, you know, based on what I've read. But yeah, uh, seriously, just to sum up, you know, I don't like the unit system, but again, I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody, one of the first mods that will come out will effectively downscale the units. I'm pretty fucking sure that will be one of the first mods, or it will make, like, cores and armies available much earlier, because, like, about cores, them appearing in the Napoleonic era, that, that makes sense. But armies? Fucking armies? I guess you have to form a core to create an army. So you wouldn't be able to have armies earlier than cores. But that's how it should have been, because... Armies were around much earlier than cores, and there were some huge armies back in antiquity and fucking middle ages and shit. You had some pretty big armies at times, you know? But seriously, just to sum up, you know, I, I, I'm i pumped. I'm really, I really am pumped. Despite all these dis all these things I don't like about it, they can easily be, they're, the game will be very moddable, and I have confidence in the modders of this community that they will be able to change these things. Or I have confidence that they'll be able to release tutorials on how I could change these things. Or at very least help me. Because I've, from what I've seen, this community, Civilization V community, is pretty good. Or well, the Civilization community in general. But seriously, you know, this is the thing, right? Uh, I like this. I really like this. I honestly think this is going to be a good game. Again, uh, just to remind you, its release is set on the 21st of October of 2016. So yeah, you can you can pre-order from what I understand. You can pre-order now. I don't I'm not big on pre-ordering, so I don't do that. I've never done it and I will never do it. But yeah, guys, um this was the video. I hope you had fun. I might do a video on the trailer and have a fantastic, absolutely fantastic, just the greatest of all of them. Have a great evening. Thank you for watching.